want to talk with you today about creativity, uh, more specifically, um, why it's hard to generate those clever problem-solving ideas that we tend to associate with creativity. In other words, I want to kind of help you make those eureka moments um, more sustainable. Now, I've worked within the creative arts for 27 years, and during that time, I've created hundreds of brand identities for ad agencies and small business owners all around the world. When you're approached with being creative, it can be intimidating, and fear can play a part in it. And this whole talk was motivated by my own struggles with creativity. I'm faced with solving a problem. My job, I'm um, expected to execute creative ideas on a daily basis. So sometimes I don't always feel that way, and I feel like I'm running on fumes. This is normal, but the key to accelerating your creativity and improving your, your ability to think creatively is by pursuing creativity outside the realm of work. That's the key. When you pursue creativity for no other reason than being creative, your imaginative thinking begins to grow. Your curiosity peaks. Inspiration comes in from everywhere, and that's why you want to do it. That's how you make creative thinking sustainable. Doesn't have to be hard. This is my friend Mike Jones. You can take the skill sets you already have, whatever they are, and apply them in a creative way. So Mike took a new chapter in his life. He's a designer, so he decided to brand his vasectomy. <laughs> Ouch. That, this is a perfect example of creativity, though. Doesn't have to be appropriate. There's no client involved. Now, when it comes to our daily routine, I love my job, but frankly, you can get stuck in a rut. And a routine hinders creativity. Now, I saw this recently on a news program. The general public at large tends to have a, uh, depreciates the importance and value of creativity as a commodity. Now, that said, even science at times tends to look down on creative people. So, this all points to the fact that if you're creative, if you try to do something creatively, and I'm not just talking about creative arts, I'm talking about any, any industry, any context, where you're trying to apply a creative solution to solve a problem, it entails a risk. And that risk might be what other people think of you or think of your idea. That shouldn't hold you back. It usually happens within a context of a job where you get stuck in a routine, and that routine leads to familiarity. Familiarity leads to comfort and ease. Comfort and ease leads to apathy. Apathy leads to a lack of passion. When you have a lack of passion, it makes it very difficult to stay inspired. And when you're not inspired, it makes it hard to impossible to be creative. Routine is the serial killer of creativity. Routine is the antithesis of creativity, and you need to fight against it. So in order to fight against it effectively, we need to kind of understand a little bit more about creativity. You know, what exactly is creativity? It can be overt, it can be um, subtle, but we see it demonstrated almost every day and the examples of creativity are as diverse as life itself. You might want to recycle your old computer and turn it into a cat bed. <laughs> Instead of buying a new car, you pimp out and mosaic your car with toys and trinkets. Whatever your mode of transportation is, you might shave a pattern into the side of it. You might love barbecue and science fiction, and you take those two passions and you put them together. Creativity is all about fun. Creativity is all about 
doing something for no other reason than being creative outside the context of your work. Creativity is defined by the dictionary as the use of the imagination or original ideas. So in essence, creativity is imaginative thinking. Creativity is how you think. Now, when I'm talking about creativity, I like thinking of Einstein. Everybody's heard the quote from Einstein. It's been overused, in my opinion. Imagination is, is um, more important than knowledge. That's all fine and well, but that's not my favorite quote of Einstein. My favorite quote of Einstein, who, by the way, was a theoretical physicist, so you don't really think about playing and fun, but he had a quote that said, the highest form of research is play. And that's apropos to what I'm going to show you today because that's what it entails. I'm asking you to step outside your comfort zone, try new things. Other people might look at you a little weird. That's okay. You'll get used to it. But that's how you leverage the fear and change it. Kids have no problem being creative Limited knowledge and life experience doesn't matter. They still use their imaginative thinking. They embrace the moment. And what they produce at times is pretty incredible. Knowledge really doesn't matter in terms of creativity. Knowledge is just a tool that your imaginative thinking can use. If you have it, great, utilize it. But kids don't have a whole lot of knowledge or experience. They still execute creativity on a daily basis. All of you growing up did creative things. And if you're not in a specific creative career now, that's okay, you can still practice it. That's not to say all your ideas are gonna be great ones. They're not. Edison came up with 3,000 ideas before he actually developed one that was successful. We call it the light bulb. Shakespeare wrote 154 sonnets some were masterpieces, others were average, and some were horrible. So don't get hung up on that. Creativity is a battle of the mind. And you need to be willing to work through the bad to get to the good, because not all your ideas are going to be great ones, but that's part of the process. <laughs> When a lion roars, it strikes fear in its prey. And that fear paralyzes the prey. The prey can't act the way it should, nor can it think the way it should, and it becomes the lion's next meal. Fear, in context of creativity, works the exact same way. It paralyzes creativity. Your approach with solving a creative problem, and you're intimidated, fear sets in, and it makes the whole process even harder. We play head games with ourselves. We usually hear things like this. You're not smart enough. You're not good enough. You're going to fail. Someone else could do this better than you. You, shouldn't, you should just find a new job. Or, you know what, you just suck. And in context of this talk, nobody will like your TEDx talk. Now, the whole reason I'm bringing this up is because fear in context of a lion and its prey is a wholly legitimate one. That prey will be its next meal. It will die. Fear in context of creativity is wholly illegitimate. That's the point I'm trying to make there. A couple of years ago, through the Freedom of Information Act, a story came out called the Tactical Deception Unit, made up of 1,200 soldiers. This whole unit was made up of nothing but creative people. Artists, stage technicians, prop makers, and sound technicians. What they would do, they were fondly referred to as the ghost army. They would go into the theater of war in Europe and set up these fake battalions of inflatable tanks, trucks, airplanes. They'd drive in circles to make it look like a lot of people were coming in. Actors would dress up as generals, go into town, and leak information to kind of facilitate this ruse. All of this was done in order to instill fear in the mind of the German army. Fear is a powerful manipulator of creativity for either good or bad. 
So we need to understand fear in context of how you think. When you think about anything, creative or otherwise, neurons are firing, sending information back and forth to formulate thought. All of these thoughts can be summed up into five distinct brainwave categories. Those categories are these. The first one is beta, normal consciousness. All of you are in beta mode right now. The next one is alpha. This is the state prior to sleep and prior to waking up. This is where dreams take place. Theta, this is your subconscious. The fourth one, delta, this is when you're asleep. But the fifth one is the one I want to focus on. It's called gamma. This is higher mental activity. In other words, gamma thinking equals idea formation. Gamma level thinking leads to creativity. Why is it hard to come up with ideas at times? Because you have to literally think at a higher level to come up with ideas. It's not something you can sustain all the time. But when you're forced to come up with an idea, you want to reach it. And that's why I'm giving this talk. When fear is introduced, it literally blocks those impulses from allowing you to reach a gamma level state of thinking. It's all about recognizing when fear sets in and turning that fear into a fulcrum for creativity. Now, this isn't hard, it's easy. You do that by exploring creativity outside the context of work. It's less fearful than work-oriented creativity. It allows you to be curious without having to qualify it. It lets you get used to failing with little or no embarrassment. And it's fun, and you only have to satisfy yourself. Now, creativity is like water. You have to keep it flowing, moving, to stay fresh and relevant, or else it can get stagnant really fast. Here's an easy example. Mark Sparfell is an artist in Barcelona, Spain, and he walks around the streets of Barcelona all the time, and he noticed that people were throwing away old furniture. He didn't know why at the time, but he started collecting all of this and putting it in a studio. And it led to inspiring a new form of artwork that he had never thought of prior to this. He turns it into sculptures now. All I'm asking you to do is to blow up your routine with TNT. Try new things. This isn't hard. This doesn't have to be difficult. Here's some practical ways you can introduce creativity into your daily routine and break it up. Drive a new route to work. It's easy to develop patterns that lead to routine. My friend Paul Holwalt drives different ways to work in order to discover things that look like faces, and he takes photographs of them. <laughs> leave your work environment to think. Too comfortable? Leave it. Go somewhere else to do your ideas. Go to the park, go to the coffee shop, etc. Do some Lewis and Clarking. Go exploring. Freya Jobbins is a former police officer out of Australia. She got injured on the job. And in the process of recouping, she realized she wasn't going to be a police officer anymore. Not sure what to do with her, her career moving forward. She always loved art in college, but she didn't know how or if she could use that to do a career. And somebody invited her to go to a flea market. She really wasn't interested, but she decided, OK, I'll go. And when she was there, she saw this box of doll parts. And she bought it, not knowing why she was buying it. But it led to a new form of artwork of hers and she's had gallery openings all around the world now. Observe the moment. Look at every mundane thing around you, just your everyday life, and see new possibilities in it. That's exactly what Eric Barkley did. He enjoys Nescafe uh, coffee. And instead of throwing it away, he was looking at the container, and he saw a new potential for it. And he turned it into art. That made him start looking at all these other things people think are junk and seeing what they could be. Collaborate with friends. It makes it easier to stay on task. Hold each other co uh, creatively accountable. It's also a lot funner that way. Make drawing a creative habit. Now some of you are going, oh man, I knew he was going to bring up drawing being an artist. You all drew as kids. You had no problem with it. You just stopped. So I'm just asking you to do it again. It's not hard, and some of you might be thinking, I can't draw worth crap, that's okay, my dad can't draw worth crap. 
And to prove it, I asked him to draw crap, and that's what he came up with. <laughs> he even drew a different perspective. <laughs> My dad goes with the flow. My kid said, hey, Graham, Grandpa, can we draw on your head? Sure, no problem, so he let him do that. <laughs> why, why am I asking you to draw? Do I want you to become fine artists? Do I want you uh, to become full-blown illustrators? No, that's not the point. Drawing has direct correlation with how you think. Remember, creativity is about how you think. Drawing improves thinking. Drawing improves learning abilities. There's four types of ways you can take in information and learn from it. Visuals, auditory, reading, writing, and kinesthetic, or touch. If you engage any two of these modalities, you begin to learn. Or one modality with an emotional experience, you begin to learn. When you draw, you engage all four at the same time. It's a supercharger for taking in information. So if you have to come up with ideas, draw them out. The more you draw, the more you like it, you get the emotional factor as well. Doesn't have to be hard. I'm not talking about portraits. Here's, keep a pad of paper on your desk. Doodle, that's all I'm asking you to do. Last one, have fun. That's easy. My friend Denise has fun when she makes pancakes, she draws pictures with the batter. Creativity is how you think. The more you can get over the intimidation factor and see that fear isn't a debilitator for your creativity, but it should be the earmark that tells you you have the chance to go to that higher level and come up with an idea should inspire you. Don't be fearful of it. It's part of the creative process. When you look at a tombstone like this one, you, this is Mel Blanc, uh, Voice of Looney Tunes, you see a graphic like this. You are born on this date, you died on this date, but you know what? The dates don't matter. All that matters is the dash. Essentially, you're a dash. And all I'm asking you to do is to step outside your comfort zone, avoid routine, and don't let it flatline your creativity like this dash. I want you to get creative with your dash. Try something new, because life is too short not to be creative. Thank you.